When it was announced that Subaru was going to introduce the Wilderness Trim to the Crosstrek, I got very excited, and I knew for a fact that I was going to be counting down the days till they arrived at the showroom. Having featured the Forester and Outback Wilderness, I have a feeling that the Crosstrek Wilderness is going to be just as fun, just as exciting, but also just as capable as its bigger siblings. And in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Crosstrek Wilderness, take a look at the exterior, the interior, take it out for a test drive also see how it compares to other trims for the Crosstrek for 2024, and also see why, if you are looking at buying an off-road capable vehicle right now under $40,000, then maybe taking a look at the Crosstrek Wilderness might be a great decision. Now before we get in this video, I'd like to thank Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. And speaking of inventory, Subaru Wakefield is home to the largest selection of Subarus in New England. If you're looking at buying a Crosstrek, a Forester, an Outback, an Ascent, Impreza, or WRX, definitely check out what they have. If you're looking at buying a new Subaru, make sure that Subaru Wakefield is your home for your next vehicle. Also with it being the month of October, it's Subaru Loves Pets Month, and Subaru Wakefield will be working with the Northeast Animal Shelter in Salem, Massachusetts. They'll be donating $100 for each pet adopted. Also on October 27th, Subaru Wakefield will be hosting a meet and greet with animal shelter volunteers. So if you're interested in volunteering or maybe looking at adopting a pet, you'll be able to talk to somebody about that. Also before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. So you're notified every time a new video goes live, on the channel. And so, with all that being said, let's take a look at the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. Subaru's best-selling model and America's most popular subcompact crossover has shown no signs of giving up its lofty spot in the automotive industry. While its success has been predicated on its affordability, much of the Crosstrek's dominance can be attributed to its peppy and capable 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine that was introduced to this model a few years ago. Now at the Wilderness Trim, Subaru has a keen eye on the off-road crossover market, competing directly against the Jeep Compass Trailhawk and possibly even the Ford Bronco Sport. With so many compelling reasons as to why the Crosstrek should be the vehicle of choice for shoppers in a price bracket below $40,000, the question has to be asked, what does the Wilderness bring to the table and why is it even a better buy than a standard model such as the Premium and Limited? Starting off with pricing, this trim comes in at $32,000, undercutting many of the rugged and trail-rated alternatives in this segment. But more importantly, for those who are cross-shopping within the Subaru family, is about $3,000 less than the larger Forester. Just like we saw with other Subarus wearing the Wilderness badge, mechanical improvements transform the Crosstrek into a far more capable and versatile crossover than before raising the ride height around a half inch for a ground clearance of 9.3 inches, which was achieved by using larger coil springs and shock absorbers. And as we'll discover, none of this drastically changes on-road performance. With the higher ground clearance comes better approach and departure angles for when you're traversing steep trails, and you'll also have a metal front skid plate. But it doesn't stop there. Compared to a standard Crosstrek, you'll have a towing capacity of 3,500 pounds as Subaru added a transmission cooler. And with the beefier roof racks, they can hold a static load capacity of around 700 pounds, which is enough to hold a tent when camping in the woods. By opting for the wilderness, cosmetic enhancements further evolved the Crosstrek's striking looks, but goes one step further, first starting with the aggressive cladding, not only up front, but along the side profile as well encouraging you to explore the paths less traveled. Unlike a premium or limited, there's less exposed paint, leading up to the uniquely styled grille that also shares off-road oriented undertones. A signature aesthetic feature for wilderness models is the hexagonal LED fog lights that offer better illumination on dimly lit trails. And standard will be the steering responsive LED headlights that gives the Crosstrek a modern appearance. A first for this crossover is an anti-glare hood decal in matte black finish, which continues on the color contrast you'll have on this trim. Moving over to the side profile, the Wilderness will be sitting on 17-inch alloy wheels wrapped in Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires. 
Conventional knowledge would suggest that this addition would result in a poor driving experience from the standpoint that more road noise would be produced, but also ride comfort would be diminished. However, to our surprise, that wasn't the case. And compared to rivals that share a similar package and setup, the Crosstrek Wilderness is easier to commute with on a daily basis. You'll have satin black finished folding side mirrors with integrated turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then as we make our way around to the back, just as we saw for the front fascia, the rear end receives its own distinct design for the bumper, which once again substitutes paint for cladding. It's the final third that doesn't experience a drastic change in appearance, besides the darkened badging and the wilderness emblem which can be found throughout the exterior. As with most Subarus, the exhaust outlet is tucked beneath the bumper for a cleaner look, and besides the higher ground clearance, the rear end mostly goes untouched. Under the hood, the Wilderness is powered by a 2.5 liter 4 cylinder engine, producing 182 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque, and is paired with a CVT. Despite the transmission not being a traditional automatic, it was retuned along with a revised differential gear ratio for better off road performance that is barely noticeable when traveling on the pavement. As we discussed quite a bit for the Crosstrek, this is the powertrain to choose, regardless of whether you decide to purchase a Wilderness or not, as this crossover's compliance and willingness to meet your expectations is a vast improvement over the standard 2 liter. As always, the Crosstrek comes equipped with Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system, and to further provide the capability and versatility you demand, the Wilderness will have Subaru's Dual Function X mode to tackle deep snow and mud. For fuel economy, you're looking at right around 25 miles per gallon in the city and 29 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, the primary unique aspect about the cabin for the Wilderness is the heated front seats with Subaru's StarTex water repellent upholstery with the Wilderness badge stamped into the headrests. Compared to the cloth and leather seating materials for the Premium and Limited, you're going to experience a lot of comfort sitting up front. While unsurprisingly, the bolstering isn't too aggressive, the support and cushioning is fantastic for a crossover at around 35 Rand. It should be worth noting that for an additional $2,270, a power adjustable driver's seat, power moonroof, and the upgraded Harman Kardon Premium Audio System will elevate the ownership experience even more. Tech-wise, you'll still have analog gauges with a small digital gauge cluster that displays basic yet relevant information. And for all 2024 models, the 11.6-inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility brings a futuristic element to the cabin. Despite Subaru moving away from their traditional dashboard layout with the large head unit, you'll still have physical buttons for the dual zone climb control and dials for the volume and tuning. The controls for the fan speed and AC can be found at the bottom of the screen and is well within arm's reach and should become second nature to use if you're hopping in from an older Crosstrek. With the Wilderness, you'll receive a rear backup camera with trajectory to go along with reverse automatic braking and rear cross traffic alert. Beneath the screen, you'll find a wireless phone charging pad with a USB-C and USB input. And to round out the front seating area for the center storage compartment, you should have enough room for smaller items. Now moving on to the second row, we're gonna start off on the passenger side. I adjust the seat a little bit further back, it's not on a recline, but I do have a decent amount of leg room. Now for the wilderness, there is no difference when it comes to interior dimensions. So if you're upgrading from say a premium or a limited, you're not gonna notice any differences at all or your passengers won't notice a difference. What I do like about the Crosstrek is that even though it is a smaller vehicle and basically a lifted hatchback, it is pretty spacious and accommodating for taller passengers. If you're on the height of maybe 5'8 or 5'9, you won't have to worry about hitting your head on the headliner. Also, I think there's plenty of legroom back here as well. Personally though, if you are looking for a vehicle that's more family friendly, I would take a look at the Forester Wilderness or the Outback Wilderness. However, for a vehicle just over $30,000, this is really great to see. 
Now moving on to the center seat, you are gonna have some great placements for your feet. The center hump is pretty aggressive, so that will take away from leg room and possibly shoulder room as well. And for vehicles in this market, you don't really expect to squeeze in that third person. So again, if you're looking for a vehicle that's a bit more family friendly and more conducive for your family, take a look at the Forester. Then on the driver's side, the seat is adjusted to someone of my height, around 5'5", and I have a lot of legroom where I can just relax and stretch my legs and just enjoy a longer drive. What I also like too is that the upholstery for this model is, it feels very premium, but also really gives you some bolstering and some grip where you're not gonna be swaying if your driver is on a spirited drive up in the mountains. Also back here, you won't have two rear air vents for the center console. However, you do get a USB-C and USB input. And rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, obviously you're not gonna receive a power liftgate on the Crosstrek, but inside behind the second row of seats, you're looking at right around 20 cubic feet of room. And that's actually a one cubic foot difference compared to what we see from standard cross tracks. And I was trying to figure out why that is. Why is this model losing out on that extra cubic foot? And it might be because of the all-terrain spare tire beneath the floor mat. I don't think that's anything to really be concerned about or really noteworthy, but I just want to throw that out there. However, what is noteworthy is the fact that with the wilderness, you had that higher ground clearance. And because of that, you'll be lifting those items into the back of this vehicle. Now with the second row seats fold, you're looking at right on 54 cubic feet. Once again, falling in line with a lot of vehicles in this market and vehicles of this size. Then on both sides of the rear cargo area, you will have some cubbies for some smaller items. So maybe you could throw in a couple water bottles, car detail equipment, or maybe even a first aid kit. Then meet the floor mat, as I talked about before, you do have that spare tire. So if you do encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. Then lastly, a feature that I really like is the rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything else of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And finally, for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's take the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness out for a test drive. So we're now behind the wheel of the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. Let's take this crossover out for a quick test drive to see how it performs how it handles, how it drives, how it compares to the Forester and Outback Wilderness, but also how it compares to other rugged subcompact crossovers in this market and price range. Best of all with this trim is that it's actually rather affordable. When you're looking at spending around $35,000, that's fantastic, especially if you are an avid adventurer looking to go off-road or maybe take on some of the dirt roads up in Vermont or New Hampshire. When I had featured the Forester and Outback Wilderness, there was distinct differences between the standard models. For the Forester, it was more off-road capable, obviously. It had the higher ground clearance. It felt more traditional SUV-like. Same goes for the Outback. The only real difference was that with the Outback, you had more road noise entering the cabin. I have spent about two hours with the Crosstrek and I'm having a hard time trying to find the differences when it comes to the on-road experience, when it comes to just the driving dynamics, because surprisingly, there's not a lot of road noise entering the cabin. If I was blindfolded walking into this vehicle, I would have no idea that I'm driving a crossover with all-terrain tires, but also, the lack of road noise, the lack of wind noise is astounding to me for a vehicle at around $35,000. As I go around this rotary, there is some body roll. Obviously, since you do have the higher ground clearance, you're at around 9.3 inches, you're not going to have that lower center of gravity. So I wouldn't expect anything less with this vehicle. However, the handling and the cornering does provide a lot of confidence. Now, of course, you do have drive modes where you can change really the throttle response, but I do notice that with the SI drive systems that when it comes to the steering input, it does add some weight, relatively speaking. It's not going to really give you a sports car experience, but it does add some weight where you will get a bit of feedback in the corners.
there's definitely more body roll with this model. But again, with the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, it pairs so well with the CVT. And Subaru has done a fantastic job where their CVTs don't drone. Even in a very minor acceleration there, it mimics the gear shifts very nicely. Going over some of this uneven pavement here. And the suspension is providing a lot of cushioning. Even though the wilderness is more off-road tuned and capable, for the on-road driving experience, it handles city roads quite well. So, as we enter the highway, let's see if we can pass some slower drivers. Unfortunately, as always, there's a lot of people on the roads. And as you can tell, lane departure warning kicked in. That's one thing I do like about Subaru is they're very safe. So if you are handing the keys over to the young driver in the family, you won't have to worry. Now at highway speeds at around 55 miles an hour, again, I'm not noticing a significant increase in road noise at all. It might be coming from the tires, but it's not as egregious, it's not as noticeable as what you're going to experience with the Subaru Outback Wilderness. And a lot of it is because the Outback is really a entry level luxury crossover or SUV, just because of the interior materials, the insulation. So obviously with the all-terrain tires, that is gonna make a huge difference. But for the Crosstrek Wilderness, I gotta be honest, it feels a bit better than a regular Crosstrek. It certainly feels dailyable. You have plenty of power to change lanes, pass slower drivers, and that is one of the key aspects of the 2.5 with this model and really for any cross track with that powertrain it's such an upgrade from the two liter and as i said before the last time i featured the cross track i think the 2.5 is ultimately the reason why this crossover has become the best selling subcompact crossover in the united states and getting into that when you compare the wilderness to even a ford bronco sport mazda cx30 maybe even a Jeep Compass. I, I really like what this vehicle is offering here. With 9.3 inches of ground clearance, you're not gonna find better at this price point. But also, since it's not a body on frame vehicle, it's not gonna feel so rugged, it's not gonna feel truck-like. So it's a nice blend, it's a nice balance. It's really what we're seeing a lot more in the automotive industry. And I think that if you are somebody who currently owns a Crosstrek and you're ready to make the leap to something a bit more off-road oriented, this is really gonna be a natural upgrade and a natural transition to something a bit more capable. Now getting into the overall vision that we have here with the Crosstrek, since you are sitting a bit higher up off the ground, you do feel as though that you are closer to say a Forester or an Outback. It doesn't feel as hatchback-like. However, it's really not gonna be that noticeable. So it's not gonna be this foreign experience to you if you are hopping into the wilderness for the first time. But when it comes to front vision, you have plenty of it. A pillars are somewhat thin since it is based off of the Impreza hatchback. So you won't have blind spots when you are approaching intersections or red lights. Then taking a look at your side mirrors, they're actually very large so I can see what's behind me and what's to the side of me very clearly. Also, of course, with your blind spot detection, it's now on the mirror cap itself. And it's a nice small little emblem which does light up, which really I can see in my peripheral vision. Then looking out back, even though this is a hatchback with a thinner rear window, I can see what's directly behind me. So you have a lot of vision to work with here with this crossover. But ultimately for those who are wondering, is the wilderness vastly different from an on-road perspective, from a daily driver perspective, compared to the off-road. We already know what this vehicle can do since you do have better approach and departure angles, and also, of course, you have that higher ground clearance. But when you're just cruising around town, when you're cruising in the city and the suburbs, there is no difference at all. It's very comfortable to drive. Steering is fluid and light, typical for what we see from Subaru. Suspension. It's not harsh, not aggressive at all. So you go over the bumps and imperfections very easily and seamlessly. 
And from a comfort perspective, I really love these seats. They're not aggressively bolstered, but they provide a lot of comfort and a lot of cushioning. And also, of course, since you do have the waters and fabric upholstery inserts, they're gonna be easier to clean as well if you do take on the trails or maybe go skiing and snowboarding during the winter. But honestly, and I don't mean this in a bad way, it doesn't feel like a huge leap from a regular cross track. So it's all gonna boil down to what you encounter when you are up in the mountains or you are taking on some snow covered roadways. That's where this vehicle's versatility is really gonna shine through. On a dry fall day like today, I'm not gonna notice any difference. And like I said before, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. When you are buying an off-road worthy trim or variant, you're gonna be sacrificing something. You're gonna be sacrificing the comfort. You're gonna be sacrificing the interior noise or the interior sound deadening. You're gonna be sacrificing the suspension and the softness of that suspension. But with the cross drag wilderness, I'm not seeing any of those sacrifices. This feels like a limited, this feels like a top trim. And for those who maybe only go to the mountains once or twice a year, and for those who only see snow covered roadways two or three months out of the year, you're gonna love this vehicle during the summer. You're gonna love this vehicle during the spring and fall as well. And it's because of that, I think this is the buy. I think this is the pick in the lineup. It looks better, it looks cooler. You have that capability, you have better towing capacity. You still have the practicality behind the second row seats, but also you can still fit smaller kids in the second row. So you're not making any concessions with this trim. And really it's for that reason. If you are looking at buying an off-road worthy subcompact crossover, I think you have to return to Subaru. I really do. So to quickly wrap up this review, I think the 2024 Subaru Crosstrack Wilderness is the pick in the lineup. And I'm not saying that because it has a better exterior or it looks more eye-catching or the fact you do have that ground clearance and off-road capability. It's the fact that you don't lose out on anything. You're not missing out on much with this trim. The fact that you do get a soft suspension, a forgiving suspension, but also a quiet cabin, you still get the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, you get better towing capacity, better ground clearance. I really don't know what else you could possibly want out of this trim or for a vehicle in this price range. If you're somebody who feels as though that your regular Crosstrek isn't giving you enough capability, Take a look at the wilderness. I think you're really going to love it, especially when you are driving on road. It doesn't feel much different than a limited. And that's why I think that with the Crosstrek Wilderness, this is a vehicle that you need to choose or you need to check out because comparing it to its rivals from Jeep, from Ford, from Mazda, this is giving you just a bit extra at a very affordable price point. And if you are somebody who is ready to be more adventurous, ready to take on the dirt, the snow, the gravel, the mud, you're gonna love what the Crosstrek is providing for 2024. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.